morning. We're going to talk about um, these little radians here and why they're super significant this past week. Um, we got a lot going on right now. We have um, a super moon lunar eclipse coming up in a couple days and had a lot of um, activity. So, and we also got a picture of the middle of Sagittarius A. There's like they're saying there's a black hole in this. So we got a black hole in the center of Sagittarius A. We've got a sunquake um, and a few other interesting things. I just want to talk about them real fast. I'm not trying to spend all day keep you guys. Um, so anyway, so these are radians, right? What is a radian? This this is a radian. Okay, and it's um, this is the radius, right? One one half of a diameter. So half the diameter circle from the center to the edge, and then that equidistance, right, in this arc from here to here, and you wind up with 57.3 degrees equals one radian. Okay, um, and then you wind up with this 28 degree exterior. So you got 57 on the inside, 28 on the outside. And uh, this becomes interesting because when we line them up over other things, here's how it works, basically. I made a bigger one too, but um, so the radian works, sine, cosine, and tan. This is just the tangent. So anyway, these become significant because um, they're found everywhere. So when we take this, the length of the radius and we add it to a radian, we wind up getting this, this shape. And the shape is all over. Let's see if I can get that sound out of there. Sorry about that. It's super early. I'm drinking coffee. Tell me, I've been using this. I've been using this symbol. You've been seeing it a lot. And I just wanted to show you how it applies. Okay, so this is a... This is the earthquake map from last year, all right? And as you can see, I started like finding the big quakes and putting them in the center and then lining these radians up and at the cross points. These things kind of, look how they follow. They curve, a curve, a curve. And then um, the really started noticing, here's a great one from about a year ago. And we take these radians and we realize that there is this percussive, right, this exponential, this moving of um, this shape, and it tends to go around in a circle and expand. And I thought, well, that's really weird. And it, it's on everything. It's on everything. I could show you many examples. Let's see, here's where we start lining it up. Look how they fit. I just just cannot get over how well these things fit in these spaces. And we can measure them with just these few stickers and suddenly there's a geometry that comes out. So this is from last year. There were four big quakes in the, um, these areas. This was a giant one down here in the um, southern Atlantic. And I put them together um, to kind of show you how these radians actually reflect one another and become a uh, shake. So there's this motion, right? And it goes through the entire sphere. It kind of rocks it. And uh, the ripple of the wave is effective for all subsequent waves, subsequent outlets. Um, they start to they start to appear, and so here we've got this is Stonehenge, with that map laid over the top of it, and you can kind of see that these points are um, they they set on those lines. And this is interesting because this particular shape that we're talking about uh, translates even to the sun, right? Because these these radians talk about a charge distribution 
and they sit on certain points where um, one side is going in, right, the interior, and one side is coming out, right, the exterior. So that kind of like this is the oscillation of the breathing in and the breathing out. Now, um, I made these prediction days for days to watch in May, and uh, since today is the 14th of May, we're going to talk about two days in particular, three days in particular. We're going to talk about the 4th of May, and we're going to talk about the 10th and 11th of May. Just so I could show you how this works. Now, here's my here's my prediction chart for the 4th, and here is a story about a Mars quake. This is a five-pointer on Mars. On what day? May 4th. May 4th, there was a Mars quake. That was a pretty good size rumble, right? And they get the S and the P's too. Primary, secondary. Primary waves will go through, P waves will go through pretty much anything. Um, secondary waves go through pretty much only solids. So it shows that on Mars, we do have both. So that was on the 4th. And uh, we also got a giant X-class flare on the 4th. It just popped up out of nowhere, right? But not really, because uh, we knew that was going to happen. So then again on the, here it is. Here is the M flare, and here is that X flare that just popped up out of, why do we know this? I know this. All right, sometimes they happen when we don't know it. Um, usually they happen when we do. And, and just to add an extra little twist um, to show you an ancient site that does line up and is measured in these ways because we look at um, ancient sites as if they're galactic, right? They're like, oh, this lines up to the Boyne Valley, lines up to the Milky Way, right? Boyne Valley lines up to the Milky Way. And because I've told you before that these, that these were ancient um, prediction sites, they could predict the time, the date, the weather, and earth change occurrences, galactic occurrences. And I've been trying to show you for years, but maybe we can just do a little proving of that right now. So here's how they're situated. Noth, Newgrange, and Doth, and they make this triangle, right? And uh, here's a diagram. And so we see where the summer solstice is, where the equinox um, sunrise is, and then the winter solstice. And this is Newgrange. Newgrange has one entrance here. Now here's a diagram of Noth. Noth has two. One faces Newgrange and one faces Doth. And uh, I want you to look at this. So this is the summer solstice and the equi uh, equinox sunrise. But from the eastern passage, you get the equinox plus six days. This is super important here, the six days. Um, there's my old drawing of it. So um, we put the radian over over the the tomb, the cairn, the structure here, right? And we find the radian, we line it up to the winter solstice, and it comes across this one at the equinox sunrise. And then the, on the opposite, uh, for Noth here, you've also got this radian that is uh, from winter sun, sun solstice sunrise to the e eastern, or to the uh, summer solstice sunrise. And again, on the summer solstice sunrise and the winter solstice sunrise. But here we got this overlapping of the two and it conveniently sits right at this six-day uh, equinox passage here. This is where I got that from uh, this page. These are his drawings. So, okay, so now we've seen that, but what happens? Okay, so now we put the 28 degree um, over it and we start getting these really really interesting shapes and where they cross each other is just amazing do you see do you see this crossing winter solstice okay make it bigger and this all fits right into the center of this which lines up perfectly with that uh 
sun, um, sunrise was 15 days before or 15 days after equinox. And on this side, on Nof, you also get this amazing, I mean, it lines up perfectly choo -choo -choo, with these um, passage days. Passage of the days. Not a passage where you go inside and you take a passage in. Passage of the times and tracks. So here's one from the outside. And we have uh, the radians again. And what I'm trying to illustrate to you is that this is very simple math that's ubiquitous and found throughout. And that it lines up to um, the patterns of earthquakes. Here we go with the, uh, so here's Pluto and Voyager, and this is like M87, here's Sagittarius A, right? And these hot spots, oh this one, I think, oh, so you can see it without it. The hot spots line up to these, here we go, one, two, three. One, two, three. And uh, the interesting thing, we'll just read a little bit about the Norns, because the Norns lived in the center of the galaxy in Sagittarius A. We just had it. They live in the middle of the galaxy in Sagittarius A, and they weave the fates of man, the fates of everything. Everyone and everything is subject to the Norns. I guess I didn't say that in here. I thought that I had. But anyway, we start putting them all together and we start seeing that um, no matter no matter how we how we overlay it, these shapes apply. So we can use them. We can use that simplicity to say, okay, this is gonna work. So here's tomorrow. This is what tomorrow looks like. Uh, in the inner solar system. And as you can see, we have this arrangement, we have this lineup. Earth, Sun, Venus, right? Mars is just outside of it, but it lies on the line of the circle with the exterior plane here, the exterior angle. So we might get this uh, activity. We go out a little further and we also see these things are lining up with some of the big dogs out here. And this is, of course, concentric circles, right? We're not talking right at the moment about ellipses and uh, inclination of the orbital planes and things like that. And I'm not sure that we actually need to. Um, yeah, these were the days that it was lined up on the, on the 11th. And on the 11th, it gets weird, right? And on the 11th, we got the day before the 11th, the 10th, we got a sunquake. Here's your sunquake. Here's the beginning of it. That's progression. It's concentric circles. And a release ejecta. Here it goes a little clearer, a little clearer, release ejecta. So this is the X flare on the 10th that day. And as you can see, and there's an M flare here. And as you can see, these uh, shapes are, we can measure them. We can measure them with these shapes. Here's the sunquake, also measurable by this shape. So I'm going to talk about this as a power exponential and how there's an increase of the charge. So here's the smaller one, the initial one, and then the charge is increased, and then actually the, it sped up. It went really fast, and then it was absorbed back into the sun. Um, and so they're calling them P waves, the primary waves, because they're saying that there is no solid mass that this wave is traversing. All right, so that's that's where we're at with that one. But I will I will say that. Um, These days, the 11th, when this gigantic CME was released from the sun, um, we got these big earthquakes. Here's these days, and here's how the earthquakes line up. And as you can see, they follow these lines. It, it seems arbitrary, like, oh, I could just put these lines everywhere, but I'm telling you, so this is from this year. And these are from last year, and the things are still lining up.
it still works. It will it will always work. It will always work because this is how the math works and this is how the waves work and this is how they interact. All right? Just I'm just sh showing you what I picked up so we can all kind of put some stuff down. So here's this uh interesting shape that we're always seeing. And if we really think about this really interesting shape that we're always seeing, it is it is uh these these radians lined up. Here's one. We make a triangle out of it and then we wind up with this all these Pisces Vesca Pisces in here. And then we put them more in a stack. Oh two, look at that. You wind up with this Star of David and this interesting flower pattern. And we try to do it with the um look I got a star by lining these ones up. And that one's a little messy. That one is much clearer. And that's what happens when you get twelve of them. Twelve of the exterior points. And we'll talk about that at another at another juncture because I, I really do want to get to that point. But bef I mean before we get anywhere we have to understand that, that this works. That this works, why this works, that it's basic trigonometry, it's the it's the traveling of the waves. And they affect everything in this way because things are spherical. So round bodies going in circles um, are applicable to pi r too. To pi r, sorry. And uh, people knew knew this. This is a codex. This is an ancient codex. And here, see, it was. Here are these flowers. Right. Here are these shapes. Why are we measuring them this way? Is it a mystery or is it actually just math? Is it actually just translatable math? We understand from a different perspective than what was once understood. And uh, how can we translate those things to work together? Because I'm telling you what, this ain't no secret to the ancients. They knew. They lived in, in this world. They understood how these things worked and they used this information to build structures to track these things and they were strategically placed in places where um, these shapes could be monitored, measured, and shown. And so um, yeah tomorrow because we do have we do have an eclipse we do have an eclipse with full, 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 full moon lunar eclipse, and we do have uh, this tugging. We do have the potential for tension. So let's see if a um, there is solar activity as predicted on the fifteenth, um, and let's see if there is geophysical activity resulting in in earthquakes. We did talk about the first quarter, and last time I did say that if we were going to have any kind of um, large earthquake activity, that it was going to be on the first quarter and not necessarily associated with the solar weather, which here's my prediction chart for the solar weather, and we did not get a major earthquake until the 8th. 8th is right here. 8th is not on my chart because it's the first lunar quarter, and that is this is a sun chart. This is about the sun and the solar activity. So I omitted the eighth, and then I included the eighth. I'm just going to show you real quick in here. Oops. Merg, why? Okay, so here's a prediction chart on you, and so that you can go to Facebook and check this out yourself if you'd like to. But why? Notable solar and geoffective activities may occur on this day. And then here we go. Uh, yeah, the X flare was the third. Pretty close. Here it is. Doom. Boom. All right. And then what do we get? Hold on a second. First, first lunar quarter. Uh, here's all this activity from the fourth, third, fourth, and fifth. 
It's that bow shock, man. It gets me every time. But here we go. 6.3 on the first quarter, on the eighth, or you're saying the ninth, because I live in a different hemisphere, so to me it was the eighth. Here's the fourth, where um, magnitude 5 Mars quake was hit, was achieved. All right. And then um, we wind up getting another strong earthquake on the 10th, that same day as that X flare. Here's this giant uh, release on the far, far side on the 11th, and then it just it just keeps going. It just keeps going. I go with the 11th and, and again. So if you want, if you want to check out any of this information, you can always go to Electric Weather, and we will have in the featured section the days that we um, post, and then you can also look into our recent media section and all of uh, this information should be, or if you go to photos, if you go to media, all of this stuff is recorded in there for you to look and observe and, and see um, any of these things we talk about in these videos. And then I will also be collecting them on heathenstargazers.org. Um, we have our website happening and going right now and so a lot of these things are slideshows if you're interested in that you can kind of check that out we have two different sections to get into electric weather because um, I'm still learning this so this is where I'm posting uh, the general predictions and then if you go to um, things we talk about when we're gazing that's where the blog is um, and all of those videos and all of our posts are in here but we also have this site for electric weather and on that page you can go and I've been collecting um, information so here's the May 11th and then here's some solar hollows and how those work then we have the 24th the 25th of April because this was also a very um, interesting and exciting planetary alignment that was happening, we wound up with a lot of uh, activity. See the negative space is space. Negative space is something. Nothing's in the space, it's still an object. I'm gonna look through some sprites. We have lots and lots of sprites, and you can go this way too. And uh, just, and there's some nice beautiful air glow. Look at that. All right, and then um, weird things auroras do. Got a nice, oh, look what that one did. We have a nice collection of very beautiful, beautiful, um, and powerful things from Steve's to picket fences to density ducts that are um, interacting with solar halos. Oh, speaking of solar halos, we also have a whole section on atmospheric refractions. We put a little bit of our uh, spin on things, but if you just would love to just look at the beauty of these refractive um, features and some information about how they work that's also available and then we have um, a section for our beautiful sun where you can just kind of peruse through through and see what these meters look like what the sun looks like on um, in various angstroms from various m monitors and things like that and we're just going to keep um, collecting them and keep doing that until uh, th until they tell us to stop because they really I mean here's a perfect example of how the earthquake was was go straight through, just go straight through, and this is like okay. This is the geodynamo and the magnetic field lines, and again, we've got like an emptiness here and a full space here, and we can talk about how maybe we aren't a um, polar. Maybe we just don't have two poles. Maybe we actually have four. You know, um, I often think about going when you when you're traveling on a globe and you're going from north to south, say so you start at the equator and you go to the north, um, eventually you're gonna eventually you're gonna reach the top, eventually you're gonna reach the top and you're going to turn and you're going to wind up being going south. Okay, and then when you get to the south pole, you're going to reach it and then you're going to, oh, now you're going north all of a sudden, all right? Um, but if you traveled and you started here and you headed east you could just keep traveling around and around and around and around and always be going east never change direction 
um, and so that's something really interesting to think about when we talk about polar dynamics when we talk about monopoles positive monopoles negative monopoles instead of like a north and a south uh, dipole all right and it actually when we talk about it in this way um, when we have four quadrants one two three four and those four, four quadrants are interacting and maybe one is uh, losing its intensity of charge and so another is gaining that intensity of charge and so once there it becomes a precipice of a boundary layer there's a pole shift within the monopole and then the next one over receives that and because it needs to balance out because remember we talked about this as an oscillating resonator and um, oscillating resonators they even things out Right. Cyclotron radiation wants to become wants to stay in its cycle. It doesn't want to take on more. And that goes for everything. That goes for the sun, that goes for the solar system, that goes for the um the galaxy, that goes for the whole nine. So, um the whole nine worlds. Right. Um, I don't know how to make this any clearer for you. Um, all I can say is I want for other people to please just borrow these stickers look them up online you can find them find your own stickers if you like a different one better and uh, just start playing with them simplicity is the key right keep it simple and uh, use your discernment and try it just just try it I'm really really interesting interested to see what happens when others um, put this to the test all right, and keep watching out for these days. Keep watching out for these days, and we will keep um, keep an eye on it too. Where did it go? May fifteenth. This is what we're looking at. May fifteenth through the eighteenth. All right, and uh, things go well. I'll start releasing some prediction dates for uh, further t further time spans, extended time spans beyond a month. Uh, but I would really like to get and and the more people that share this and the more people that we can discuss things with the more I will talk to you about it might seem like I'm being repetitive right now but there's it's like basics right foundation level courses we need to establish this uh, foundational parameter and then once we do that we can talk about all the other things and why they work why they work and uh, expand on that and you really really get into some nitty-gritty um, it does it does seem like I'm repeating myself and I will until we've collected enough listeners to extend our uh, lessons so that's up to you guys I'm, I'm uh, asking for your help in sharing um, especially since I'm getting starting to get um, starting to get harassed a little bit and uh, it seems like the more accurate I predict the fewer people listen to me and that's a sad state because I, I, I would think that this information would be quite helpful useful it could even actually save lives it could save lives if we could predict exactly what and where an earthquake is going to happen take out all the other crap all the other craft that you've ever learned take two stickers and take a few minutes and see if you can predict an earthquake using this method um, and it, as we progress like I said as more and more people come along um, I'll start sharing more with you but until then I'm I'm kind of like working really hard uh, the the juice isn't worth the squeeze um, I could just, just sit here and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze but it's not it's not it's got to be reciprocal I've got to get something back and I've um, been doing this for a very long time and I, I have confidence in where this is going the history of of it and what it's capable of and I would really really like for that to be shared with a larger audience and I would really like for this information to be available to the mass public I wish sometimes that the people you know because I, I reach out and um, like many you know get kind of scoffed at kind of laughed at kind of pushed away and uh, that's just more um, resistance for my persistence like okay guys okay sure we'll show we'll, we'll show you how it works 
we'll show you how it works and then um, you can take it and do whatever research analysis time it takes for you to uh, process it and prove it um, because I'm really interested if, if, if this is like a four-year coincidence or if there's something here that could be put to the test and um, it gets pretty easy to just break it down into two shapes and try it yourself. All right. So uh, thank you again for listening today um, to more of the weird ideas. And uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, you get some amazing results from this method as well. And then once we start, like I said, once we start pulling in that kind of information and you guys really start getting foundational with some of the stuff we can we can move on and talk about more because obviously I just I use uh, the Brune de Boyne because it's like my favorite and the most amazing the most amazing of all the megaliths on all of the entire world this little spot in Ireland is just it's just t de creme de la creme you know all right. Uh, thanks, guys. I promised you I'd keep it short, and that's what we're doing. I want you to have a wonderful day, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.